We often associate carbon fiber with special use cases. Aerospace parts, exotic cars, and luxury items to name a few. In this project, I've opted to use it as a centerpiece, a new facelift of the previous project, bringing style and strength to Project Twisted Tins. From afar, the speaker remains mostly unaltered. It looks almost as if some color changes were made and I slapped a new and improved sticker on it. As we dive in closer, we will unravel the hidden changes that truly make this new and improved. The facelift begins with 3D printed molds. This close-up shows the issue with that, as these voids won't allow removal vertically. To fix this, I sanded the layer lines down with 220 grit sandpaper and followed up with a lacquer spray to build up the dips and crevices left behind, creating a smooth surface ready for mold release spray and casting. The molds used in this build were two-part molds. However, due to issues releasing the cone, I'll opt for three-part molds in the future. The mold setup I have worked, however the mold was destroyed upon part retrieval. This is the exact dimensions as version 17's printed cone, just in a forged carbon material versus MJF nylon. This did result in a heavier cone though, as carbon fiber has a higher density than MJF print. I could have reduced thickness since the carbon is somewhat stronger, but I wanted a true apple to apple comparison of the materials. Much like version 16.1, the spider and surround were created using a two-part silicone mixture that was injected into the mold with a plastic syringe. The internals of the speaker have remained unchanged from version 17. The spider and surround are exactly the same shape and size, just different materials. Same with the cone, it's now made of carbon fiber instead of nylon. The motor is the same underhung design using a 4.5 ohm coil of 34 gauge wire. The motor plates and magnets are pulled directly from version 17. It uses the same machined steel plates and ceramic magnets. The motor is vented through the holes on the bottom to provide cooling to the coil, and the whole speaker resides in the same enclosure. By using this enclosure, the data I collect only reflects the changes made to the cone and suspension, as those are the variables for this test. However, we're now going to move on to a build montage and play test before looking at the speaker data. First, a word about the video sponsor, PCBWay.com. Whether it's custom PCBs, 3D printing, or CNC machining, PCBWay has been a go-to provider for bringing complex projects like this to life. PCBWay support was instrumental in making this build possible, providing high-quality, cost-effective prototype and in-use parts that you can rely on. Check them out at PCBWay.com to see how they can help you take your project to the next level.
Okay, moving on to DATS. So on the screen is version 17's DATS graph. We see a bump in the blue line and a little hiccup in the red line. We'll now put version 17.1 graph on the screen. And we can see the blue bump is much bigger, signaling a much better design as the resonant frequency is more prominent. Looking at some of the TS parameters, we see a slight dip in loudness from 75 down to 73 decibels at one watt, one meter. This is likely due to the moving mass, as version 17's was 8 grams, and 17.1 is up at 13 grams, so about 60% heavier. The FS has dropped from 93 to 51 hertz as well, meaning this speaker is better suited to lower frequencies. This can be a product of heavier cone suspensions as well, as more weight reduces the FS. The coils measure roughly the same impedance, around 4.2 to 4.4 ohms, so those are very similar. But that's all for the TS parameters. We're now going to move on to REW and look at response graphs. So the response graph replicates what was seen in DATS, as the response graph for 17.1 extends much further into the lower octaves. This is likely due to that reduced FS frequency. We also, don't, we also see it doesn't get as loud as version 17. This is likely a result of the reduced efficiency, since the moving mass was almost 60% greater in 17.1 it didn't give up much on the upper octaves though, so with a good DSP, the speaker would make for an excellent mid-range driver as it still produced decent sound out until 8K and then it also had that lower octave bump. So overall, adding the composite cone and polymer suspension seemed to help the speaker perform without giving up more than it took away. So the added complexity of manufacturing seems worthwhile in this case. And with that, this project and experiment seems to be ready to wrap up. So a huge thanks to those still watching this far. This experiment is giving lots of valuable data for future development of speakers. Also, in the works, I have a tweeter that will hopefully come out in the next month or two. So watch out for that. Unfortunately, the subwoofer took a back seat while I experiment with these tweeters for a minute. So those will be later down the road. Be sure to like and subscribe if you're interested in following this build or any of the upcoming projects. Until next time, thanks.